Hello. This sequence covers the Seaside Web Framework, an innovative way of building web apps in Faro. Seaside is powerful and flexible. It is based on the concept of reusable, stateful components on top of a stateless protocol, HTTP, in web applications. Seaside is secure by default, of course. It integrates all the latest Web 2.0 techniques, like Ajax, etc., and REST architectures. This is the Seaside URL. You can refer to it for documentation, like the free online Seaside book. It also offers a set of Seaside tutorials. Lastly, you can ask questions on the Seaside mailing list. An active community will reply to any questions you may have. A little history. Seaside has been in production since 2002. It is actively maintained. The Seaside framework is the basis for many Faro success stories. Those stories are online, on the Faro site, faro.org. As you'll see, there are many web projects, and most use the Seaside framework. As I was saying, Seaside is a web framework centered on the component concept. These components are reusable and stateful. It has a domain-specific language to render the components in HTML. The rules for composing these components will be covered in a later sequence. A web application is just a root component. Seaside makes it possible to debug applications on the fly in the Faro debugger. In a later sequence of this course, you will learn how to use metadata to generate forms automatically. These are some of the examples of web applications built with Seaside in production since 2002. I'll zoom in on a few of them. This application makes extensive use of graphs and other interlocking components that make a complex application. Here's another example of an application you can find on Faro's website. It features reporting tables that are quite complex, interlocking with each other. That can be built very simply with the Seaside framework. The main concept in Seaside is the component. A component is a subclass of WA component supplied by the Seaside framework. A component is reusable and stateful. It can be rendered in HTML in the form of div, etc. In Seaside, a web application has a root component, in this case, WA counter, saved in the system as a web application. It will be named counter and accessible as such from the URL. Here's an example of my counter application in the URL. It's a component rendered in HTML here. The value of the counter is zero. We have two links here. You click on plus plus to increase the counter value and on minus minus to decrease the value. The code for implementing this application is very simple. I create a subclass of WA component, WA counter. It has an instance variable named count. The initialization method sets the counter to zero. One method increases the value, the other method decreases it. Now we need the HTML part, so the counter is rendered in HTML. All we have to do is endow it with a method, render content on, a parameter. The parameter will help us generate the HTML code. Here's the example with the addition of render content on to the counter class. I use this parameter, a conventional Faro object. It's an instance of the class WA HTML Canvas supplied by Seaside. I send messages to this object to generate the HTML code and a heading and an anchor or link. The callback message enables me to specify a block of code to execute when I click on the link. Here, when I click on the link called plus plus, the self increase method is executed. Clicking on minus minus prompts the execution of the self decrease method. It's so simple. If an error occurs when I click on a link, i.e. in a callback, I knowingly have inserted a halt point. It could be an error. I've inserted a halt point in the decrease method. 
self will halt if the counter is decreased below zero. That will bring up the debugger. As you see, if I do this in my web application, the debugger is displayed here. Here's the program's application stack with the method render content on and the decrease here. We did stop on halt if. I can modify the code right here. Press proceed and my application will receive the HTML response as if nothing had happened. Another problem in web applications is the back button. When the user clicks on back, it desynchronizes the server and client. Imagine I increase the counter five times. Now it reads five on my screen. Then I click on the back button in my browser. The counter now reads four, but the server isn't updated about my back button click. So if I click again on plus plus, the screen will display a six. The problem is, the server side thought we were still on 5. 5 plus 1 equals 6. C side makes it very easy to handle the back button. We define a new method of the counter class, states. It will return the array for which the state is to be preserved when the back button is hit. In this case, it is only the object self, the counter. Now, if I press back and then click on plus plus, I should see 5 again. Callbacks are actually blocks of code that contain all of Pharaoh's power. I can write any Pharaoh code in this callback. I took a more complex example here. I can use an alternative if to say if I increase the counter plus one or plus two, depending on whether the counter is odd or even. For even numbers, the counter will increase faster than for odd. As you see, Faro is really a powerful language in these callback blocks. To return to the preceding example, if I click on plus plus here, it brings me to a new window, telling me it is an even number. Next, I'll show you how to write a greeter application. The user enters his first name. He types it in here and when he clicks on say hello, we want to display a string of characters, hi and the username he entered in the beginning here. It's very easy to code for that in Seaside. I create a subclass component of the class greeter. The instance variable is username. The method render content on I'm showing you here displays the field username. The next line is text input. That's the text field you saw before, where the user writes Bob. I will have one callback. This time, it is a block with a parameter, value. The value parameter of this block will be the string of characters the user entered. We can store it in the instance variable of the greeter component username. Next, when the Submit button is clicked, I'm going to call a new component using the command self-inform. I tell it to display the string hi, Bob. I concatenate the character string hi with the text entered as username. I hope those of you who are used to coding web applications noticed that Seaside does not require manual request parsing to find parameters in requests or URLs. It does not require XML configuration files, or indeed files or pages. I did not say anything about links to the next page. The only thing I talked about was components, objects and messages. I talked about callbacks and the ability to debug live using the Faro debugger. In sum, it's easy to build web applications in Seaside. There is one root component. Components can be combined to build more complex applications. A component renders itself in HTML with render content on. We have an extensible domain-specific language that generates HTML code for each component. We'll cover that in greater detail in the next video.